Hi everyone, welcome at Wavefact. Today we have three special guests. We have Mark and Stephen Forschner and Richard Schäufler from the DigiBridge company. And today we're going to talk about data-driven marketing. Don't try, succeed. And I'm really pleased to have you here. Thank you for having me. And just to give you a little bit more context before uh, they introduce themselves and add some things I probably maybe uh, have over overseen or uh, just haven't said yet. But uh, Mark is the CEO of DigiBridge. That's uh, basically the company that unites all three of them. And uh, in his uh, spare time, he's NFT trader and analyst. Steven Forschner is the head of outreach and partnership at DigiBridge. So we have here some very special uh, knowledge about the topic as well. And Richard Schäufler is the advisor at DigiBridge. Yeah, perfect. And chief marketing consultant uh, of the VIB marketing agency and the founder of NFT art uh, gallery, drone providers and marketing foundation USA. And sounds pretty exciting as well. So thank you again for having me. It's a pleasure talking with you. And feel free to uh, tell a little bit uh, your story. Uh, what are you passionate about? Uh, what are you doing from time to time? Just to, yeah, get the Yeah, feeling. I will start here. First off, thank you again for, for having us on today. Uh, so I'm Mark Forschner, founder of DigiBridge. Um, have been full-time in this space for almost three years. I don't remember a lot of it because time just flies by in this space and you're so like involved <laughs> that you kind of lose track. Sometimes I go outside. And I'm like, huh, there isn't outside. <laughs> I'm just so on my phone or on Telegram all the time, just working. But I love it. I love every moment of it. I'm so passionate. Ever since I was 11, I started my own stores. I did everything from designing YouTube backgrounds for clients that I had at, at the age of 11 I had my own eBay stores that I did where I had to promote my own products. I even repaired the products and, uh, and so resold them uh, wholesale, did all that stuff. Um, there was a moment in time when I was making close to $2,000 a day at the age of 13, um, wow. only for a couple of days. And my parents yeah, but took the money, but they needed it. So, I mean, but it was a good experience. Got me to realize that I have something within me that is able to that I can uh, reflect on the Web3 side, right? So um, I had four jobs um, back in college back in 2020, COVID hit, boom, knocked out all the jobs for me. And I was left with, well, nothing. I didn't know what to do. And um, I jumped into crypto. Uh, luckily that year, 2020 was when DeFi summer, they say, came about and everything exploded. Um, and I learned every in and out, uh, analyzing every community I was in, um, and if it wasn't for the help of the people that invited me on Discord and the friends I met along the way, that's why I said bullish on friends right here. Uh, I wouldn't be here right now, too. And it wouldn't be without these guys, too. Uh, and the rest of my team uh, that, you know, we wouldn't be here either. So, again, it's a pleasure to meet you um, and be on this. And I'll let everyone else <laughs> have their, their, their time. Awesome. There, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was a great intro, Mark, and I appreciate you having me uh, today. And uh, so, yeah, my name is Steven. I'm the head of outreach and partnerships here at DigiBridge. Um, I've been full time in Web3 for close to two years now. Um, similar to Mark, uh, when COVID hit, you know, it was hard to maintain a job. Um, but what I did see during that time was a fire in Mark's eyes. And I've never seen that in someone before. When you see someone so passionate about something, you, you are that passionate yourself. That's when I knew I had to jump on board. So I saw Mark and I saw the problems in Web3 when I jumped in uh, with marketing. And uh, I started mainly on the DeFi side, transitioned over to the NFT side more recently. And um, yeah, ever since I've just been studying communities, um, trying to make sure that you know I'm bridging fruitful partnerships and maintaining them. And uh, yeah, there's a good amount that I do, but I'm just excited to be here. And uh, I'll let Richard introduce himself and yeah, we'll keep, keep it rolling. Uh, welcome all again. I'm Richard Schoifler. Uh, I'm a 20 year plus marketing you know, vet. Uh, in that time, a uh, leading Google partner, uh, founded several companies, uh, agencies, you know, marketing agencies, VIB, Marketing Foundation, 
And how we got here today um, was we had the Beeple moment in 2021. Uh, and, you know, I instantly knew, you know, I, I could see the future where NFTs, Web3 was going. And I, I actually divested uh, from crypto. I mean, I was mining, uh, doing ICOs, all this stuff, you know, like six years ago got in. And, uh, and it, it's, it's been a pretty good story since, you know, seeing exactly, you know, how the, the, the market's going right now. Um, and that has led uh, to the NFT Art Gallery, one of the biggest uh, collections in the NFT scene. And working with you know tons of projects, helping them take their community experience, and you know their their marketing to a whole other level because that's what we've seen. You know, we'll kind of we'll elaborate more. But the biggest thing was was you know we came in it was was shilling and influencers and a lot of hollow you know short term gains you know really quick right. And now we're getting to more you know what what, what I'm able to bring you know to, to the data-driven side where, you know, you, you need to really know what, what you're doing and you really need to have something behind all that to, to bring everything together. And that's what I've brought as well to the DigiBridge experience to help round out, you know, a 20-year system that's validated, you know, through and through and through. So great to be here. Awesome. Yeah, again, thanks for having me. And I really like this because basically it's three guys and one vision, right? So uh, that's going to be an interesting episode. And yeah, basically, the first question I would have for you is, we all know that, as you just said, basically, there have been a lot of projects uh, flying around, basically, with zero fundamentals. Right? <laughs> we all know that uh, some might succeed because of their brand and marketing and storytelling. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, so for good and bad, that's uh, one of the key factors, cornerstones of Web3, at least it was for last year, right? For the last couple of years. And I'm wondering right now, what do you think as an agency or as a collective, what do some projects better than others? Because there are definitely some differences. Yeah, so when it comes to the, the projects that we've seen over time, the landscape, we always talk about it with with some of our clients and the uh, and the people that come through our door. Um, you know, six months ago, six to eight months ago, you can get away with a lot of stuff uh, in terms of like not having a website, not having a proper white paper and stuff like that, not really planning it out too much. Now it's different, um, and this landscape changes on a consistent basis. So always being uh, in the know and always making sure that you have the latest info is very key, including when it comes to marketing, because things just change so rapidly, right? And um, so, you know, what I've seen projects do right and wrong um, in terms of the, uh, the marketing and again, like you said, it, co it comes down to a couple of things. And the first thing is really, you know, what does their product or service actually solve in terms of the problem? Uh, the problem is there even a starving crowd that they want to feed, right? Um, because there's a lot of projects that start up and um, they don't really have the, the why to what they're really doing. They have the what, but they don't have the why and they don't really really get that problem down um and then also uh from a lot of it too it comes from the experience right the when we you know since we're invested so much uh including richard himself he has over 1500 nfts um i'm not his, at his level yet <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we invest so much that that we create the experiences for our clients that we would like to see ourselves when we're with these projects too um and and i really see the experience um, behind the communities and the projects really building out over time. And that's going to be a really big component um, to a lot of these projects going forward, forward is what is the experience like when you join that community, when you enter that website, when you, you know, do all these activities for them. Um, and then on top of it, you know, what's the utility behind the token or the NFTs that they're even dropping in the first place. Um, there's a lot to take account of. Um, and, you know, when people hear NFTs, sometimes they just think of, either it's a JPEG or, oh, I can make a lot of money off of it. Um, but, you know, those thoughts can really hinder you down and kind of lock you into place. You have to really expand your, uh, your thinking capabilities and, and really look at everything from a long-term perspective because things are still being built out um, right now. Like it, the, this industry is still in, in its infancy stages um, and it's okay not to be perfect yet, right? But as long as you're experimenting and optimizing over time, um, that's the best part about it. And that's why, you know, we all love to do here is, is learning these new things and optimizing as we go. 
Um, because again, this industry is so new and there's so many new things popping up all the time. Um, I'll let everyone else answer it, but that's a little bit of my kind of answer on that end. So I, I think, you know, you know, for, for what you said, right, what separates some of the projects that just kind of explode out from the others that kind of putter or, you know, sink, I, I think it's, it's, it's the thinking from the very beginning, right? Like, what are we really trying to do here? Are we trying to add value? Are we trying to, you know, really create something? Are we trying to extract value, right? And so, I mean, that, that's the first premise. And then it, it's, it's about preparation, right? And just like what Mark was hitting on, you know, really, yeah. Uh, like, I, I'd say like the, the, the first phase or evolution of, of the NFT scene uh, there, there wasn't a lot going on. You had the, the early investors, the emotional degens. You're like, we just really wanted to change the world and we're willing to, to, to spend money on anything that, that provides a little glimmer of hope of positive change, right? Um, and, and for that, you know, there wasn't a lot of knowledge and you got by with, with short-term gains. And so I, I think now, again, the, the whole preparation thing, like before it was like maybe 30% preparation, 70% execution. Now you're getting back to like, you know, normally in the whole world, 80% preparation, 20% execution. I think you're going to see a higher threshold. You've talked about this many times, like, you know, 85, 90% preparation, 10% execution now, just because of the, the fear, uh, you know, and having to come back from, you know, what's been, what's been happening. And then the other thing, you know, I, I think that, that a lot of people, once you get the preparation and, you know, the data and you know what you're going, you know, where you need to go, um, it's, it's, it's the emotional aspect, like, like how, like how can we have a linear experience, right? Like we have clients coming in, you know, they'll have games, they'll have different things that, you know, and again, we all know games are not instant. They, they, they can take years. So how do we connect the audience now? How do we create an experience that's going to carry through that we can deliver on right now, right? So, so that's, that's, you know, a whole lifestyle experience, the whole emotional aspect, like, like what's in it for me? What, what's in it for the masses? What's really going to keep, uh, Keep this going, and really, that that's that's belonging. Uh, that that that's that's you know creating you know community led, right? So they have influences and, and things like that. So so really paying attention to to your white paper, your roadmap, and creating an experience that's that's a, a long term sustainable experience with you know competitive advantage, high barriers to entry that's hard to imitate. Those are the areas that you know and, and, and the projects that focus on those those aspects that that usually have the easiest time of of you know floating and, and and i know mark you know earlier said you know websites and all that you know they're not you know that that you could get by without that but there are some projects like you know uh bear market bullies yeah, and say, yeah, uh, others. yeah that, that that did come out and and they're you know looking at the simplicity right yeah. so so paying attention to, to the to the current trends is another yeah. one right right now like is people get bigger right and these collections nfts are going everywhere like you're going to see them for for concert tickets, uh, you know, different sporting events. I think you're going to see collections that are going to be in, it's going to be totally normal to have collections that are in the thousands, right? I mean, you're going to see mega collections coming up. And, and the bigger the collection, right, the easier it is to get lost. And that's where, again, simplicity, keeping it simple, KISS, uh, you know, is, is, is going to be rising to the top. And, and you're seeing a lot of these old school uh, marketing, um, you know, strategies and things, you know, based on data, that are now rising to the top because again, like, like just simple, uh, you know, sharing and, and, you know, Hey, this is great getting them there. No, it's, it's on to the next, the, the critical masses, right. They're not the emotional, like, like the, the next wave of, of consumers that's really going to drive us to the next level. They are really more like data driven. They're not so much emotional. Like they really need to see why, like connect the dots, show me why it's not just like, tell me on a vision. It's no, show me this, show me, you know, the substance right so yeah it's more on that interesting yeah as uh, steven before i add something to this i would uh be curious on your food point as uh from a partnership and outreach perspective basically because nfts are also known to do <laughs> partnerships on a almost daily basis for some projects so it would be interesting yeah so actually one thing i've i've really wanted to mention, and uh, I'm glad that I can do it here on your platform. Um, when it comes to partnerships, where I see a lot of NFT projects get it wrong, is they whitelist just the whitelist. Like they're just like, oh, here's a whitelist spot. Now I hope you buy it. And majority of the time you're gonna flip it. And it's, if 
All right. So how I see it is when you have a whitelist opportunity, right? You want to share it with similar communities that actually care about what you're providing. So if you're a play to earn game, you share it with other communities that are interested in that demographic. Um, where most people get it wrong is they're like, oh, this big project comes up to me. They want our whitelist. I'm just going to hand them as many as I can and hope that they buy it. Um, that's not how it really works because when that happens, in my opinion, the majority of the time you have an increased amount of people who flip. And uh, when you have too many people who are flipping and not enough people who are holding, that's where that's where it messes up. So yeah, that's where I see from a partnership side where projects usually lack is they don't strategically think about who they want to whitelist with and who they want to partner with. And they don't even maintain those partnerships. They just do it and then you just leave it. And it's just like a one-time thing, but like, no, you got to keep going. You got to keep making it, making it work, making it happen. Cause you both have value that you can keep on adding to each other. So that is one thing I did want to add. So uh, thank you for letting me uh, speak about that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of interesting things said, basically. I remember uh, last year, especially, there were a couple of situations, especially with token hype and NFTs for sure, where there was someone saying something, you know, in on Twitter, writing, uh, sending out a tweet or something like that, and suddenly uh, related NFT collections and tokens and so on pop up, right? Uh, most of the time, these are scams, right? We all know that. But um, <laughs> they always tend to pump right just because uh, as you said there's always something yeah emotional for a smaller group right but uh really holding the value like keeping the floor price high what you actually want as as a long-term thinking nft uh issuer right um you have to basically build something fundamental right and that's what we have seen the last couple of months and year basically really strong because uh yeah last spring it as as you just said it was super easy yeah sometimes you didn't even need uh, a website you still sometimes don't need a website if the story is fine and no roadmap just look at uh how's it called this goblin uh, nft right also have nothing basically and that can work right as i said it's just a brand but um yeah channel we see an increasing entry barrier as you just uh, uh, stated before so that's really interesting to see and uh, you referred uh, Richard to data-driven marketing already so I think all or basically everyone who a little bit uh, dig deeper into the marketing sector knows that marketing is full of metrics yeah you can basically uh drown in them right so at least i would as a software developer and so i would be curious now what kind of metrics because there are a lot of i would say bullshit metrics also as well right which don't have any meaning anymore or right now but what are the key uh metrics for your agency or in your opinion and how could projects possibly improve them in a meaningful manner? So uh, do you want to take this, Mark? Did you, I saw you took off your microphone or do you want me to yeah, go I mean, first? If you want to go first, it's fine. Okay, so I, I mean, for you know, the metrics that, that we follow, I mean, really they're very similar to you know, any other marketing uh, segment, right? So, I mean, you're looking at conversions, um, cost per an acquisition, um, you know, cost per a follower, uh, churn, um, bounce rate, right? So, I mean, if you have a website, you, you, I mean, you want to see how many people are really sticking around. Uh, if you're doing paid campaigns, you know, you're looking at click-through rate, right? Because that indicates the precision of the targeting, like the relevance of the audience. Um, and, and really, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the other thing that, Right now, you know, a lot of the metrics you know, that 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 are that I I would like you know that I think we would like to follow, like you know, for for how many white you know how many spots did we put out there? Did they actually did they actually mint? Right. Some of these things right now, just because of the way the wallets are and you know the the, the whole crypto thing, like it's 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 a little harder to track. But there is there there are software companies that that are working on these problems, and you know they'll have more access but right now 
Um, you know, it, it's just pretty much, you know, you're having to use a lot of, a lot of the old school and just looking, you know, at, at gain, you know, your followers, uh, you know, all the percentages, you know, engagement on your posts. Um, you know, you're, you're looking to see that you have organic, real, true traction, right? That, that not, you know, that, that you have an audience of 100,000 followers, but whenever you do a post, you know, you have five people in it, right? Uh, you know, Discord, um, you're looking to see the same thing, you know, engagement. Uh, and then, you know, obviously when we go to mints, um, you know, you're looking at velocity of demand. Um, you know, we're looking at searches. Uh, so you're looking at trends, uh, you know, even, even, you know, pre post mint, right? You're looking at Google trends, you know, different things, you know, just to, to get a, a real true idea of, of what the, the scenery is, right? And then, um, you know, there's, yeah, I mean, that, but that's, you know, for the, key, the biggest KPIs, right, that we would, that I would watch, you know, those are where it's at, but I can't wait to talk more about the other data that we go into, though, to really make it. Yeah, I would say it, it also depends on, like, the, the other goals, too, because you can always look at, like, for example, like, daily active wallets, weekly active wallets, that kind of thing on specific, like, dApps and stuff like that. Um, again, it's, it's really goal specific, uh, you know, how many people are signing up for the whitelist, newsletter, that uh, so on and so forth, and just going from there. So Richard basically hit all the nails in the head, but um, these are also the things that that we're looking uh, or working with on that end too, uh, especially in this new black blockchain age. Um, you got to kind of switch a couple of those things and really look at those active wallets and uh, go from there too. So yeah, I would say also um, from like a recommendation standpoint too, like making sure that if you have a goal in mind and what you want to hit you, what you want to reach, you know, you work backwards from there and, and really break it down to, into small actionable steps and set milestones along the way um, to make sure that you're actually in the right direction. And if you don't hit those milestones, then reassess the, the data, um, you know, what's going right, what's going wrong, optimize, and then go from there um, and just keep working at it. So again, this is a whole new age of marketing and technology in this sense. So, um, it's okay if you make some mistakes. I mean, not everyone's perfect, especially in this space. So there's no perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Steven, do you have something to add to that? Honestly, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They, they nailed everything. They, they hit everything on the head. So I'm, I'm yeah, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just one thing I will add to that, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, not having to be perfect. And, and really, that's what I think one thing that a lot of people need to understand about marketing is that really it is a lot of controlled experimentation, right? You really can't make assumptions. You can't, I mean, every, especially in new markets such as, you know, Web3. So, yeah, it, you know, that, that, that all comes around, you know, along with, with the bull ride that is marketing, right? But just making sure that you have somebody that, you know, is a, that, that knows how, how to work in the lab, basically, right? Awesome, awesome. We, we have talk, uh, talked a lot about web free marketing now. I think many marketing companies, uh, I'm not sure if you want to share this now, um, try to enter the web free space. Yeah? At least uh, many approach uh, my, <laughs> on my side, at least. Um, I would be curious, uh, what are in your from your point of view, the largest differences between those two markets in terms of marketing and growing projects? So, I mean, for, for this, I mean, I'm just going from, you know, the past 20 years that we worked in like traditional markets um, and, you know, all across the board, you know, from, you know, the, the HVACs, the medical, you know, fitness trainers. And I, I say that the first thing is data, right? So, uh, Web two, like uh, the traditional, like there, there, there's a lot more data uh, in, in that. It's more, you know, of an old, you know, it's, it's older. There's, there's, it's easier to interact with that audience. It's easy, you know, to communicate, to touch them, uh, to, to track everything. Um, and, and, and the other thing too is it, that market, right? So it, it's not as demanding, right? Those consumers, they're, they're just shuffling through and doing something that's very commonplace. It's, uh, you know, th th it's just it's part of life it's almost like breathing right uh whereas the web three crowd it's like they're more aware of the power they have and they're just like really like demanding so they they know that they took a big risk to be there <laughs> and it's almost like like they're really aware of this and like they're i, I mean I, I maybe that's part of it you know the psychology but they, they want to be able to touch you feel you 
uh, and be able to contact you. I mean, you know how rare that is to be like, hey, I want to I wanna be able to talk to the CEO. I want to be able to go on the Discord, right? And that's what, you know, the Discord, no, they're, they're the artists, the creators, the wizards. Like, it's like, I'll talk to the president, you know, and yeah, you know, and you can. And that's the thing, like, like even, in, you know, for the events, right? Just coming out of like NFT NYC, you know, Mark and I, you know, we were, we were rubbing shoulders with all like the biggest players in the scene. Like we were at, you know, some of the cooler parties. And again, where do you get to do that? Where you're actually right there, you know, with these people. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing. It's more intimate, more demanding. Um, and, and you have to be more creative, right? Because this is a, Web3 is pioneers. Uh, this is all new uncharted territory. You really need to be able to work with very little data and be able to, you know, to, to make big grand forecasts with, with, with very little, right? You don't have the historic data that you have in the Web2 space where you can stand back. So those are the biggest things that I see. And because you said, uh, do you really think it stays like this, right? Uh, everyone is saying Web3 is uh, that fluffy uh, ecosystem, actually, where everyone support it each other wide, where you can, as you just said, reach out to the CEO, artist, and co. Um, do you really think it stays the way it is because more people will enter the space which probably don't have to take that much risk because it gets easier, the barriers lower, uh, more uh, or stronger brands enter the market. Do you think that might change or is that like, is that really based on the technology and the ecosystem itself that we have this kind of behavior in the market. I think like the fundamentals won't really change in that sense, but it, everything will kind of, uh, as time goes on, like I was even reading an article yesterday, right? Like we have NFTs right now, but I heard a lot of people say, hey, these NFTs, let's go to NFTs 2.0, right? Let's, let's, let's focus more on the utility side. Let's focus more on the value side. So. Um, I think, again, we're still in the early stages and the way things are working right now, I think we're building the framework for it. Um, but as more regulations are in place, as time comes on, as more of these companies come in place, I, sure, things are probably going to change and we're going to have to adapt accordingly. But I still think that the fundamental fr uh, frameworks that we're building right now are going to be um, glued in place and we're just going to be building upon it. I still think people are going to be interacting um, and engaging as much as possible, right? Like you have, um, I, I see it as like a cycle. You have, you know, the, the the physical world, you have the metaverse, and then you have the the um, digital side, right? And all those are interconnected, especially on the customer journey and in the future for how I see it with with blockchain technology and everything working together, you're going to go into a store, you're going to buy a, uh, you know, a shirt or something and wear it. And then in the metaverse, you're going to be wearing that too, right? And then, and then on the digital side too, it's going to be connected with your NFTs and all this other stuff. So everything's going to be interconnected. And I see a lot of that transitioning over time, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit of why, how I think of things are going to go <laughs> um, going forward. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything there. Yeah, I mean, I think what Mark said is, uh, you know, it's perfect. I think we're right now we're just kind of laying the foundation um, of, you know, everything that that is to come in the future. And, um, you know, I think, honestly, I think it, it, it's it's crazy. But in, in the Web2 side, to jump on the topic that we were talking about before, um, on the Web2 side, you know, it's more like a cannibalistic type of, uh, approach where you know oh one company has to be bigger than the other company they have to devour that company get past them you know make sure that they that company is no longer there and they are the main source of you know that product or service um and web3 though it's more so about collaboration and how much you can actually work together to make something huge not only for yourself but for something bigger than yourself and that's why i think web3 is really unique and uh, i think that will stay you know, permanently where people are collaborating and making sure that they're always, you know, working together to achieve something bigger than what they could have even imagined in the first place. It would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, to that, just real quick to add, you know, I really believe that you're going to see, so the, the whole fuzzy, you know, I, I, I think that you'll see projects and communities that 
will take this and you're going to see it go to a whole nother level for like the love and the experience, right? Because we're coming to an experience economy. Um, and the whole camaraderie, like we all rise together. Um, that'll, that'll happen for so long, right? Um, until, I mean, there's, there's, there, there's always going to be some players on top. It, t winner takes all, right? Uh, and there's going to be cannibalization. I mean, this is, you know, probably five, 10 years out. Hopefully could be sooner. But, but you're gonna have extreme projects, right? It could be Yuga Labs, right? Where they start bringing in uh, other projects, saving them, you know, as they kind of see and, and really, uh, but, but, but yeah, everything that we have right now, I, I think that you'll see the chaos because uh, this is a new market. So a lot of things that we have right now, it's very chaotic, but you'll see order come to it, regulation, all these different things. And it'll be very, very common and uh, give it, you know, 15, 20 years and it's gonna be, a mature market and just in the wake of our beautiful ride into the future right and it'll look just like everything else and everyone that didn't get into nfts it's going to be like not getting into the stocks when the stocks came out right you're like you just missed out on picasso <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of ups and downs uh, to that but <laughs> love it um yeah, basically, uh, I would have one last question. And I think that, uh, especially for newcomers in the space, super important. Uh, there are obviously a lot of things that can go wrong, also with communication. And are there some specific, I would say, no goals where you say, if you do this, uh, you have a hard time possibly fixing this or any mistakes you have, you, you, you have met, met, made, if you want to tell us, or if you know any mistakes other projects made. You don't need to tell if it's yours or others. It would be just interesting. Um, <clears throat> I would say the first thing is not tracking data at all. Like <laughs> there's some companies out there that, you know, put a lot of money into certain channels and they don't even track the data behind it. Are they even getting a good ROI? Who knows? Because they're not tracking it. Um, so that's like something that I would say. And then even when it comes to the data side too, like even if you are capturing that data, um, how are you even interpreting it? And are you actually creating actionable steps from that that you can actually you know, achieve further re revenue generating uh, uh, steps from? Um, and then you know, from that too, just not being able to actually segment the data and so on and so forth. Um, that's, that's some of the stuff I've seen when it comes to the companies that uh, I've invested into and also just worked with alongside and that we've helped with um, just from like the no-goes. And then also, again, um, looking at it from, you know, everyone always says community, right? Um, community is the main focal point. And if that's the case, a lot of these companies um, treat everything as uh, customers, but how can you build a community when all you're trying to do is just sell to them all the time, right? Like you have to kind of, if you're building that brand up, give, 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 and then look to take in the future um, and really adding that value as much as possible. And so if you think about it in that step, think about it from a, lo a long-term broader perspective, um, I think you can go far, farther than you actually think you could, instead of always thinking about having to sell the next thing and having to do this or sell out or do that, um, looking to form that community from the ground up and um, building those advocates so you can that army that you can take and, and bring everyone together in that sense. Um, yeah, if Richard and Steve want to add on. Yeah, sure. So um, for me, um, what I see a uh, lack of with a lot of projects, um, they need to kind of focus on managing their expectations better. Um, certain projects will be like, oh, like for example, like a project will be like, um, you know, we have a game coming out in X amount of days. And then they promise it, they keep promising it. And then, oh, day comes about and there's no game. And everyone's like, well, where is it? I just I just invested X amount of dollars to, to play this game and now I can't even play it. And, you know, it's things like that. Like, obviously there's going to be unexpected events, but you have to plan for that as well. You have to make sure you set expectations correctly and make sure, you know, I feel like there's a lot of delays in the space, a lot of lack of preparation. And that's where it starts from. But, you know, honestly, I think overall, um, it's really just managing the expectations. And like Mark said, you know, uh, being transparent with the community and actually part actively engaging with them and making sure, you know, a lot of projects just don't do that. And, you know, my personal favorite project, um, they, they literally just like 
before every big announcement, they they shout out all the leading community members who they feel like, you know, are doing, you know, amazing work for their project. And that makes you feel like amazing if they say your name in front of hundreds of people and you're just like, it's there forever. It's like a recording. And I don't know, it's just something like that. It's small things, but yeah, I'll leave it at that one, Richard, to have time to speak. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think the, the biggest problem that, that I see over and over and over, right? So, you know, again, when you talk about data and you, and you really, you know, you take in the data, like there's infinite directions you can go, right? And I think a lot of projects, they, you know, timeline, budget, uh, goals, um, they try to do too many things, right? And that's, again, like, like you need to understand point of diminishing return. You need to understand where to fire the lasers. You need to understand like the steps like all too often, you know, I have, we have clients that come in and they want to do this whole thing, but you want, it's, it's really steps and let's focus on this, you know, keep it simple and let's go through and do the steps because when you try to do all of these things and have all these fires, it's, it's just, it's chaos and it, it, it you don't, it, it, it rarely works out. Right. And then the other thing uh, that I'll say is, is so, you know, if you get that part down, well, then the, there's the other part where you know, individuals come in, they don't have a complete understanding of the, of the current state of the scene. Um, and they, they're going off of like old knowledge or what they thought they knew about it. And, and we can clearly see, hey, like, like this path to success, this isn't like, it isn't gonna work. And usually we have to, you know, restructure and kind of put things in the proper order to properly carry the audience to get them to the point that they wanna go. So, so it, it's just, you know, understand, you know, so basically, you know, understanding the order of, of uh, you know, the, the system and, and, and really, if you don't know what you're doing, get a Sherpa, right? That's the biggest thing is I say, don't go into this thinking, you know, that, that hey, because this is a very complex scene. It's moving so quickly right now. And it's so different, it just changed so much, right? We all know this over the past few months, you, and you get one shot, right? Don't ever think you get one shot, man. If you don't knock it out. And, and that's the thing for a lot of our clients, I mean, truthfully, like we're going in and we are selling out. Like we have to, we have to, to, to position them to have their mint sold out before they occur, right? Zero risk. I mean, you have to have these things done for, for your first entry. Otherwise, why, why are you, I mean, it's your yeah. brand. It's everything, right? No, but that's, you know, that's it. Just, just give complete respect, love. And, you know, it was great being here. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you as well. That's a great ending. And yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you. See you. Bye. Pleasure.